I wanted to say this one other thing about that choice that you made, um, kind of pivoting. But it's so interesting that you said you're like, I'm not going to talk about the ceremonial and like the religious aspect of things because that's no one's business, you know, except for like Rita and the medicine man. And the thing is, is like in the history of Navajo studies, which has been dominated by anthropologists, the field was actually started by anthropologists um, in the earlier part of the 20th century. That's all they cared about. That's all they wrote about. They they were interlopers, right? They absolutely intruded on ceremonial and religious knowledge. And there are volumes written about songs and ceremonies and all of these things. Um, and Tony Hillerman himself would include a lot of that, speaking as if he knew, as if he had a right to talk about, like authoritatively to talk about those things. But he was also very obsessed with witchcraft, which is also part of the, it's part of the religious and the spiritual and ceremonial world, the Navajo world. And you don't talk about that. So your book is a horror book. It's about, it's a scary book because it's talking about ghosts and things like that. But you never, you like make a choice not to talk about those things, which is really powerful. I feel like that's a very like a, an indigenous choice to not do that because literally the entire history of what's been written about us by anthropologists and like um, literary figures like Tony Hillerman, settler, white settler literary figures, they center that all the time because that's what white readers, honestly, that's what they like. That's what they want to consume. That's how they engage in a relationship, how they form knowledge. You know, they become like the experts about Navajo ceremonies and things like that. And so your book, just like the, one of the reasons why I think as a, like a Diné studies person, like a, a scholar in the history, um, the intellectual history of our people and our nation, your book is such a turning point because it's one of the first things I think I've ever read that makes an active choice not to do that and turns that on its head. And I think that also is why it feels so authentic. And you're making a choice to talk about something from a Diné perspective um, that we're not supposed to talk about. But the reason why I trust, I trust you as like an author leading me through the story about death and ghosts, like this taboo thing is precisely because you don't take it there. And you, it just feels very, honest and raw. But like I said, like I trust you as an author, as me as a Diné person reading the book to take us on this journey into this because death is a reality for everyone, not just Diné people. It's like a fact of life. And like you said, so many of us, it's like everyone experiences it and many people experience it on a regular basis. And so why not speak to each other about it in a way where we can trust? We have that trust with each other. So I just wanted to say that. Those are things I really loved and really respect, actually, about the book. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, that was very important to me. <laughs> and I think part of the reason is that, re just like you're saying, it's that reaction to reading Hillerman. And I've only actually read one Hillerman book. Um, and I had to, because it was required summer reading at St. Pius. We had to read one of his books and I can't even remember which one it was. Uh, but yeah, and, and we you know, had to take a test at the, at the end of the summer. So I had to read it, but I've never consciously gone up and grabbed one and said, I can't wait to read this. No, um, but I think that there are still indigenous authors who, who still do that anyway. Like they still feel the need to share songs or they still feel the need to share that knowledge and that's up to them. I, I suppose that's if they're, if they're comfortable doing that, or they feel like that part of the, their story um, works better um, by bringing that knowledge into it, then, you know, that's, that's up to them. But in this particular context, in the way that it was talking about death, um, yeah, it just didn't feel like, I, I guess in a way I kind of felt like I'm going to get in enough trouble already. I don't even want to drag that part into it. Um, and, and plus I always just kind of felt like that thing, like you're saying, like, how come he's talking about that? You're not supposed to say things like that or talk about that. Um, and so I was like, so I wouldn't do that too. That it would, it would just, you know, the hypocrisy would be too much if I did the same thing. It would just be ridiculous. Uh, so, you know. Um, but I think that's just kind of, I think that's a thing that as indigenous authors, and there's going to be more, um, more, um, indigenous authors who are writing fiction, 
Um, and I've read two, I'm reading one now, I'm almost done. And then I've got another book that I just blurbed for, um, both Danae authors, both writing fiction, and strangely enough, both writing about death um, in their own way, um, writing about recovering from death and how that, how they're, um, they're turning their trauma into something else. And then somebody else um, I, I, talking about different stories about growing up. Like she wrote a st short story collection and every now and then one of the stories will talk about death. I think one of the stories talks about um, someone coming back home with a casket, writing next to a casket in a car, you know. Um, that kind of stuff I think is great because I feel like I kind of, I kind of stepped out into that void <laughs> to see what would happen. And I didn't blow up or drop dead or have, or get cursed or do anything. And so I feel like the Danae authors are kind of like, Oh, okay. So let's dip our toe in too. Cause we're going to be okay. Nothing's going to happen. And they're kind of doing it. And I'm so glad to see it because you know, this is reality. This is, I mean, we're writing fiction. Yes but our, all of our fiction comes from what we know and what we've experienced. And, and, and so I think it's a healthy conversation to have. And I think readers feel the same way. And I actually had a, a couple of readers come up to me at the uh, flea market and they were young people. These are always the, the people that come up to me in this context are always very young people, like early twenties, maybe teenagers, and they want to go into forensics or they want to be a pathologist or they want to do that kind of thing. And I feel like they've come up to me and they say they, enjoy, they felt a connection to this book because it kind of took the stigma away from them wanting to do that. I think like they probably told their mom and dad, oh, I want to work in the pathology lab or I want to be a coroner or I'm interested in working with the police. Um, and they were probably like, what? <laughs> um, but cause they come, they've come up to me at readings and said, I'm so glad you wrote this because now I don't feel so bad about telling my mom, I want to work as a forensic person. Um, and, uh, so, you know, that's cool. I think that, uh, that's good. And, and we need more people, I think, to help other Diné people to deal with that part of life. Um, and to have another Danae person have to talk to you at the pathologist's office, at the office of the medical examiner, police officers, these kind of people. Um, it's just something you don't see very often, you know? So it's good. I'm glad to see that these young people are, are willing to take that step, you know? And older people, I would imagine too. 